Well, I'm on my way to get the new car. Uh, I flipped the axle today, but I prepared my GoPro, but could not use it because it was raining. But all we did was I called the wrecker and pulled out my trailer and he took the flip axle from the rear and hooked it up to the trailer. I put the pins in, everything was good and then I started putting the, started connecting the uh, hoses and remember last time we did a bunch of conversions from one type of connector to the other <laughs> so i was suspecting that something like this would happen so basically the 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 flip axle that the number four that i connected now the the red line has a large jc connector red line now when I look at my XL3 where you know this thing I was connected right so now XL4 connects to XL3 XL3 on the red line has the also a GC connector but it's a small one so I cannot connect the red hose and I have a bunch of big uh, big uh, male couplers or connectors so I could swap this small one for the big one but then the stinger would not be able to connect because the red line there is small but again I can change that male connector on the stinger so basically I have to change something two times but unfortunately in order to change the the connector on XL3 so that I can hook up XL4, which is large. I need a I need a adapter. You know, I cannot just take a large uh, coupler and hook it up in the back of the trailer because the the threading over there is different. And I used up all these couplers last time. So worst case scenario, I can take the male part from the from the stinger. And just that will solve the problem for now that means I can I can use I can hook up the hose to the smaller connector on XL3 right but then when it's time so this can be like a temporary solution but then when it's time to use the stinger again I have to change the couplers over there you know I'll have to change I'll have to inst I'll have to get a new new JC type small coupler now some people are wondering why I was saying you know I love this car so much why I decided to sell it well normally the policy is you know don't complain don't explain right but I'm gonna explain that first off I was hoping that the, when I switch from Mustang uh, v6 when lots of people were leaving some you know bad comments about the v6 Mustang with only 305 horsepower and so everybody shut up when I bought this car unfortunately that did not translate into views right I was hoping I will be doing all these mods and doing videos about this and this would you know increase my increase the attraction of my channel but unfortunately each time I do a video about the Challenger all I get is usually bad bad comments and hardly any views right and so I'm hoping now I, I guess people were just envious I'm guessing because this guy is you know it's not that cheap in the States I, I forgot what is it like 35 40 grand US but it's not exactly twenty thousand dollars right it's, it's a medium size uh, I mean medium price car it's not the most expensive one obviously but it's not the cheapest one either and so I'm guessing just many people were were you know envious but also there's a factor of lots of people don't like 
Chrysler products. I was not a fan of Chrysler products myself until I started driving Dodge Ram and I saw a huge advantage over the same overhyped Ford F-150. I'm telling you, I would take Dodge Ram 1500, especially in the TRX shape, any day of the week over Ford F-150. That just, those guys are, you know, they're very good at marketing. They know how to do marketing. Oh, check this out. We got an oversize in the curb lane with a pilot. That's very unusual. You know, you don't see pilots in Ontario too often because they're not required until you're really, really big. What is that? Is that a crane? No, it's the guy is hauling some uh, agricultural machine. Oh, wow, it's on a step deck. And the guy goes next into his lane. What an idiot. Check this out. Wow, he just loaded like that. On a step deck. So anyway, yeah, the, the car did not translate into any views, you know, and, and now, first and foremost, of course, I'm a trucker, but secondly, I'm content creator, YouTube content creator. I'm always looking for new ideas. And uh, I'm a fan of Dodge and Chrysler products. Maybe, you know, there is something about that because you see everywhere you look, when you see a cop, nine cases out of 10, he or she is driving a Dodge Charger. Dodge Charger. And actually in the States, I was talking about this, Chargers are much more popular than Challengers because a Challenger is a two-door car Charger is a four-door car, it looks a bit, you know, more fashionable and actually chargers are more expensive because of this. Um, and so I decided to get a four-door, you know, brand new car. So hopefully this will uh, create some interest on my YouTube channel. So I'll be, I'm not going to be doing mods, maybe just something cosmetic because, you know, I, I test drove that car. It sounds perfect the way it is. You see, like now... My challenge, of course, became, again, <laughs> I'm always doing this. It became a bit loud. That's why I put the extra muffler. It's still loud, you know? Um, and I am I want to have automatic transmission, and that's what this charger will have. It'll, it has eight-speed, eight-speed, like, modern style uh, automatic transmission, which can still be used in a manual mode, like semi-manual with no clutch because it has you can shift you can move the shifter to the left and then you have pedals in here you have these pedal shifters under the steering wheel kind of like a all contemporary racing cars that's what they use right i don't think they use a clutch they just use pedals over here so it's not 100 percent manual it's still semi-automatic because i'm pretty sure they don't have a clutch so they just put it into this semi-manual mode and you have pedals here and um, and so yeah so automatic a new car hopefully that will increase the interest and also I'm I'm getting tired you see like I'm always carrying my backpack with me right and so normally I back into a spot at the coffee shop Right, I back into a spot like a good boy, like a trucker with lots of experience. Because I don't like backing into somebody, you know. Backing when you don't see. And in this car, you know, the rear is, is raised, so there's not that much visibility in the back. So it's much easier to back. As soon as you arrive, you back. Um, and so, 10 times out of 10. When I'm coming out of the coffee shop, well, not now, now they all close, right? But when I'm coming out of the coffee shop or restaurant or truck stop with my backpack, I have to go to that side, open the door, put the backpack on the floor, close the door, then walk around the car, get into my seat. Because, you know, I got a camera, I got a, a laptop in there, it's pretty heavy, so I never, 
climb inside the driver's seat and then raise the backpack with one hand with one arm and put it in there it's always so basically you always walk around the car now I was always a big fan of two-door cars but when I had a Mazda right I had two Mazdas before Mazda 3 2.0 liter five-speed manual and then I had a Mazda 3 kind of like elite premium trim with 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine and automatic and both of these were four-door four-door sedans and even though I'm not a fan of four-door cars I think two-door cars look uh, cooler but what I discovered specifically from this standpoint like my application that I'm always carrying the backpack it was much easier to to drop the backpack behind me using the door on the left side right because there's four doors so you go around the car like this so I have I don't have to walk around on that side so I walk around like this I open the rear door on the driver's side I drop the backpack on the seat close the door get in the driver's seat so it's much faster and it's much less annoying I'm telling you so each time here right open the door drop go around and of course you know four doors turns out I discovered recently there's some kind of a Jeep behind me with a bunch of antennas on the roof that's never good you know but usually cops don't drive Jeeps are they do they I don't know everybody's speeding it's raining it's slippery like why And so four-door cars are actually safer. Did you know that? I always thought that two-door cars were where the body was stronger because it's you know more metal, right? And a four-door car is kind of like a can with four holes instead of two. Turns out a four-door car is reinforced in the back because they have to protect the passengers, whereas in a two-door car. You have these pylons over here, only here, right? Whereas in, in a four-door car, you have four, I forget what they're called, but kind of like safety pylons so that the car doesn't squash into a, into a pancake when it turns over, right? So it turns out a four-door car is safer than a two-door car. And for me, it's more convenient from because of this backpack situation, right? Um, and last but not least, I'm a big believer in automatic transmission. I also think that automatic transmission transmissions make driving safer because it, you you don't get distracted by constantly thinking about the gears, you know. Because if let's say the traffic now I'm in gear six, gear six this car is is geared ridiculously fast, like in gear six. I'm doing 75 miles per hour, let's just say. I'm at 1850 RPM, 1850, which is way too low, but that's what, you know, gives you good mileage. So if the traffic slows down and let's say my RPM falls to like 1700, 1600, that's it. The car becomes dead duck in the water. I have to shift into fifth gear. And then of course my RPM goes up and the, the car becomes uh, fun again and so you always have to think and so especially in the city between lights right okay which gear you know you of course you get used to it because I'm a trucker with an 18 speed manual but you know why go through all this rigmarole when you are when you are you know on your weekend trying to have fun right and so automatic transmission is safer in my opinion because it takes your mind away from these switching solutions gear changing solutions which gear do I have to be in uh, you can concentrate 100% on driving or texting whatever you choose you want to die and or get a ticket you do texting if you want to just focus on driving you do driving right so that's my opinion and that's the reason for uh, getting this new car okay where's my uh, gonna jump on 407 which is a 
tall highway and I don't have, oh, I have to remember to remove that transponder. So basically now I didn't take out any stuff out of my car, uh, but this way I did this a couple of times, right? So you park the, the old car, this one, you park it next to the new car, and then you go side to side. First you remove everything from the door, from the seat, from the compartment, and put it exactly in the same position in the new car. And this way, not gonna miss anything. And I gotta take off the, you see the transponder? That's a uh, easy pass. For US. Which is useless now, because US is closed. So I cannot go, I cannot go in my car. And I told you guys, my court was uh, canceled, right? No explanation. It says a reason, court. Like what kind of explanation is that, you know? They didn't say that charges were dismissed. They just said court session canceled. A reason, court. <laughs> How court can be the reason? These guys are making rules as they go along, you know? Will I miss this car? Definitely, but another thing, by the way, I forgot to say, another, now I have my uh, fuel mileage, fuel mileage, gas mileage uh, gauge on, over there, and on the freeway, no complaints. I always see 20, 25, you know, let's say if I'm, I'm gear six, I'm doing 80 miles an hour, it'll be 25 miles a gallon. I'm telling you, that's what this car is geared for. It's geared for um, fast driving on a freeway in a straight line because it's too heavy to go around corners. <laughs> yeah, I try to go, I try to go do that um, speedway in uh, Cayuga, Ontario. And actually I was beating guys on the straight, you know, on the straight, but the straight is like 400 meters. And then you start going like this. I remember some guy in a, be in a Beamer, he tried to beat me. He cannot pass me on a straight because I push gas. I, I, I was in sport mode, of course. This car was flying, you know, it was, but once you get into corners, that's it. That Beamer, and he's around me, you know, because he's much lighter. And uh, he, he, he probably was a front wheel drive car. Yeah, you see? I always have to, once the traffic uh, slows down, I'm always shifting, like screw this. Like I like that idea with pedals, you know? If I'm somewhere where I wanna, I'm missing the manual, I'll switch into that uh, semi-manual, semi-automatic, and I'll do pedal shifting. I'll be, uh, I'll be the pedal commando. Uh, Back to the fuel mileage. So on the freeway, perfect. You see, like right now, I'm in gear five. It shows 30, 30 miles a gallon. I'm driving 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour because of slow traffic. But in the city, and that's what I mostly use this car for, as soon as I just go to a coffee shop, to a hotel, uh, to a restaurant, I'm telling you, this thing is just, it's, it, it's not even a weekend driver, you know, there's a daily driver, right, and then, I would not consider this car a good weekend driver, it's kind of like uh, this guy watching on YouTube, he has a Hellcat, and in one video he says, uh, all these, you know, old guys that they buy these Camaros, and then they try to baby them, and they're very slow, they try to conserve gas, and he says, come on, live a little. And then in another video, he's, he admits that... Yeah, in another video, he admits that, yeah, uh, he tries not to drive it too much, you know, he, not, uh, he tries not to drive his Hellcat Red Eye too much because it's bad on gas, and secondly, he doesn't want to put too many miles on it because then uh, the resale value is affected uh, you know, the more miles you have, the cheaper your car is at resale. So you want to keep that car as an investment, right? But for me, like, you know, I put in full tank, 
full tank which i think this car has 70 liters uh, a 70 liter tank which is what uh, 20 gallons yeah just over 20 gallons us and if i'm driving on the freeway like now this is 401 east towards toronto and check this out these are the scales right the scales are closed on both sides east uh, eastbound westbound all they have is construction construction vehicles man <laughs> good times for truckers you know no dot or as it's called in in ontario it's mto ministry of transportation of ontario and um and so yeah i have full tank of gas so 70 liters so uh 37.8 is yeah 37.8 is 10 gallons so 37.8 liters is 10 gallons so 20 gallons is 74 oh yeah so it's slightly less than 20 gallons a tank in this car and um Yeah, last time I drove there yesterday to see the car, I took 407. Like it goes kind of like south, In but. 600 meters, turn right onto Trafalgar Road, Regional Road 3. But over there, I don't have a 407 transponder. I have it only in my on my truck. And without the transponder, they charge you the separate photo fee because they took a pic. They take a picture of your license, license plate. It's an expensive, it's an expensive towing. It's 407. It's much more expensive than than the ones in U.S. Like even you know the Easy Pass I have is way cheaper. Yeah, the couple is great crazy power but how much power do you need on it on a, on a, on a regular road you know 10 miles over the speed limit is what cops will let you get away with 15 20 you get into trouble you know so a car like this you need to you buy probably to go to uh, you know if you there's a speedway a raceway place near you and, and you one of those crazy people that want to race every weekend so I'm not even talking about Hellcat I think Hellcat is a total overkill but that's what that's why they sell so many of them because you know it's a, it's a crazy vehicle a pure American muscle 707 horsepower or 795 if you buy the red eye but that's that's why I had I had to change tires on this one because the the standard tires this car comes with the uh, 245 40 20 i think they're way too small there's not enough traction for this all this power and so yeah gas mileage sucks on this one i'm not even talking about hellcat but this guy by the way this guy from us that has a hellcat red eye he is buying a charger like the same body as what I'm getting but he's buying a charger scat pack 6.4 kind of like charger but with this engine that I have now and he says that would be my perfect daily driver <laughs> and I wanted to leave a comment is that you know don't don't uh, don't judge so fast because the 6.4 it's pretty much it's it's as bad as as a Hellcat you know in the city if you're driving on the freeway all the time yeah it's fine but on in the city between lights and by the way look at this like i'm accelerating pretty fast now right like i have yellow like no fuel economy but everybody's faster than me and i bet most of these people they don't have a 6.4 engine so their fuel economy is better so 
And so I decided that no, 6.4, it's, it's not a good daily driver, despite what this guy from California is th uh, thinks. I think it's that 5.7 is a good daily driver. Even though I remember when I had the Ram, a Ram 1500, uh, I had the same 5.7 and I remember it was sucking gas in winter, especially in winter when you go to a coffee shop, you know, when you drive around town, it was sucking gas pretty bad. But that's a pickup truck. It's much heavier, you know? And so just to give you a couple of numbers. So this car from the factory had 485 horsepower, 475 torque. So this is Again, RT Scat Pack 2018 Dodge Challenger, 6.4, 392 cubic inches, right? So 495 horsepower, for, uh, what did I say, 475 or 470 torque. The new car, 2021 Dodge Charger RT 5.7 has 300 70 horsepower 370 so basically 115 horsepower less 115 horsepower less but it has 395 i think it's 395 395 torque so 470 on this 395 on that one so you're only losing 75 torque And because that car has a Daytona package, it has the same 20-inch um, wheels, like very nice looking wheels. It has all kinds of, you know, memorabilia over here. Like here when you have the B logo for Scat Pack, over there it's da it says Daytona. There's Daytona uh, stickers, like a vinyl stickers, you know, black. On fenders it says Daytona it's, it's not the basic basic RT it's because that package is like three grand Canadian and yeah the seats are the seats are nicer than this one because this one the seat is uh, flat that one is all stitched it's much better here it's much much more comfortable for the, for the back so if I don't if my battery doesn't die I'll show you guys and then, uh, so I, I'm uh, seven kilometers away from my dealer. Oh, and I asked him, what do you want me to do with the tuner? You wanted to put it back into factory factory setting? And then I'll take the tuner and then I can sell it because it's like 400 bucks US. Or I can leave it with a 91 tune I have now and then I'll leave you the tuner, which might be a good value for your buyer, right? Because uh, like I said, this thing costs a lot of money, Diablo Sport. And so it comes with uh, two tunes, what they call them, canned tunes for 91 gas, like 91 performance and 93 performance. And 93 is perfect because I was using a 94 gas, but then it just became too expensive here. It was like dollar 65 per liter and so i changed the tune to 91 and i didn't see a lot a big drop in performance i think actually gas mileage became a little bit better and so i i told i honestly told the sales guy i said i have a tune installed so what do you want me to do uh last time you were asking me about factory exhaust if i kept the factory exhaust because you want to reinstall it on this car so I said, you kind of like a factory, factory spec type of a guy. And he says, yeah. So I said, okay, here's a question for you. I have a tune installed on this car. I said, you know, right? All these performance cars, most people install a tuner. And so, so I said, yeah, I can either return it to factory and pretend I don't have a tune and then I keep this and I can sell it or to improve the attractiveness of this car for your buyer for your potential buyer make it easier for you to sell Continue straight to stay on Road. 
because people that know this they appreciate this because you have to buy it in the states it's not easy and and so I said what do you want me to do and the guy said okay um, just leave it the way it is now he says I told him I said 91 gas and 93 I changed to 91 and he says yeah leave it in the same 91 gas uh, tune but when you get here just show me show me how to change it back to factory so that if I need to I can change it back to factory and then leave the tune with the, the tuner with the car I said deal because you know they were very nice to me they they gave me a very good deal on the car shame on gold Chrysler for being so greedy like these guys gave me a much better deal lower payments I'm telling you like and he and when I told the sales guy about this I said why is it like this why do I have to drive 40 miles to get a better deal and he says it's always like this he says we have people coming from like 100 kilometers away um, because because they can find a, a better deal here you know and I don't know if you guys have the same experience is it always easier to get a better deal away in, a, in another town is a killer I'm telling you if, if somebody likes this kind of thing like it's an amazing car you know but like I said time came you know I owned this beauty for two and a half years I took good care of it did you know oil changes regularly it's in a good shape I just changed the brakes I love this car but it's kind of like you know when you have a, a family member that you love but sometimes you also hate uh, one of the one of the days you, you you take a trip to a lake in a deep woods and then you come home alone and then you know you and your wife you get a baby so you get an, a new member in the family so no big deal so that's what's happening here <laughs> One advantage, of course, of manual, you see what I'm doing now. I'm not pushing the brakes. I'm, I'm using the gears to slow the car down. And some people say that this, uh, when you have a manual transmission, usually uh, brakes last longer. Well, that has not been my experience with this car because I already had to change the brakes. But... If you remember I did the upgrade upgrade to uh, what I later discovered were used reconditioned Brembo brakes you know I got them from um, what they called like a big dealer in the States big online dealer and it's a very fine print to see that these are actually reconditioned because the picture looks like brand new like I was assuming I was buying something brand new and that's those brakes that's what when I took my car for oil change to the Chrysler dealer this you know and they did uh, as part of the oil change they did the inspection he says your brakes are they were like five millimeters he says your brakes basically probably the pads are five millimeters and I said, so what do I do now? Shoot myself? He says, no, you're still good for a few more months. And then when I came... In 300 meters, turn right. And then when I came for the another, like in six months, I came for another oil change. He says, yeah, you need you need to change the, uh, the brakes. I think it was front axle. And... Um, 
so it, it was pretty expensive but I did that because I'm, I missed the safety So this is this, this is the last trip. Last trip. I'll show. I'll I'll tell you in a second why I'm doing this. Why I cannot enter like this. Your destination is on the left. Because I'm gonna scratch the heck out of the car. And that's another thing, actually. Another another annoying little thing that. I don't want to have any more is the car became too low you know like first I installed the uh, long tube headers and everybody says you got to be careful when you have long tube headers because they stick out at the bottom and I started being more careful and then because I have too much power and not enough traction I changed the, the tires to 275, right? Turns out those 275 tires, they're lower than 245 tires. And so the car, it was already low because of the, because of the long tube headers. It became really low when I installed these tires. And so now, I see an entrance like this with a big hump I cannot cross it straight I have to go at an angle see like this you see if I would came from here I see I already see lots of scratches in there see like this it's okay but each time you have to do this BS you know all right where's my car this is where I parked last time because this is the dealer and that's um, and of course that's another reason you know uh, you always get I, I believe it's true you always get a better deal not just when you're out of town but when you return to the scene of the crime so to speak when you return to the place where you bought the car you know Last time. Bye bye baby. It was a good fun car. But it's time to move on. Well there, there you go guys. The rain stopped so I can start my can start my camera again man it looks good I love it see it says Hemi it says Daytona everywhere Hemi man so it has pretty much the same has the same decals like very similar decals but it's already from the factory And they they cleaned it up of course you know they you see they washed all the the wheels kind of like what I did with my car man and I see the seats are much better these are the higher quality seats smells good all right so probably let's start with the with the right side because I get those I get those uh, crazy bubble plates, but <laughs> but what do you do? I gotta restart training. That's probably the most difficult part. So now we're gonna put this.
so these tires that's what I had 245 245 245 45 ZR20 or ZR in Canada and there's uh, it has um, he said there's floor mats in the trunk since I exercised I'm gonna restart this hey What's okay then we take this Hashim you're not you're not camera shy are you no, i'm sorry. you're not no, camera no, shy man. Go ahead, buddy. okay thing, this is uh, hashim say a few yeah, words man. say a few words on, for my lot for we my got, viewers we got the 2021 charger here he's leaving the 2018 challenger this one's like uh like back to warranties everything is back new brand new brand new tires brand new brakes yeah it's gonna be a great car man you're gonna enjoy this car yeah all right so everything is transferred oh check this out i didn't even notice this until now it has a that's the part of this expensive option which is uh what did it say daytona you see it says daytona on the back and it has this and then it has a black roof it has daytona um logo on the front it has this hemi thing in here i love it and it has a cold air intake and so the tires are 245 45ZR20. So four door automatic. Get away from here. Some crazy spiders. Go to the Challenger. You, you don't belong on the Charger. So the same two keys, except now this one is much cooler. It has a remote start. I never had this, you know? It's gonna be so cool for videos. So it still has everything. I'm not gonna change a thing. Well, that's what I said with the Challenger, then I went crazy. But this thing, you see on the Challenger, it was oval shape. Here it's all, because you cannot do oval, because it's all, you see the, the bumper is molded like that. So no reason to change anything on this car. I don't know. It has a bunch of sensors. It has the camera right when you back, because I got a very useful feature. I got used to that. Uh, but over here, I think it has more sensors. It has four over there. I don't even remember. I know it has a camera here. That's the camera. But yeah, this was very nice, nice car. I really enjoyed it. You see, it says Daytona over here. No, Charger. Sorry, Charger. But I like these lights. You know, in 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 the dark, this whole thing glows. Hold on. Can we put on? Can we do four-way flashes? Oh wow, it's all LED. Man. <laughs> LED. And here. Nice. Nothing on the mirrors. Yeah, it would be cool to have a little light in here, but you don't get that for $49,000 Canadian. So that's gonna be on the next car. And so, uh, yeah, it still has the film on the, on the, uh, on the computer. So similar, I see same steering wheel, but now it has this, that's what I was mentioning, right? And you can pull it sideways when it's a D mode, and then you have, you can use these see 
um, it says minus plus so this goes down one gear this goes up one gear and so the seats are much better you see the seats are all stitched and it says Daytona and then the same uh, electric seats electric uh, tilt and telescoping steering wheel that's what I had on the Challenger now I like this much better like the space here is much bigger then you see I was able to put all my junk from the Challenger but in the Challenger this was like this much so this is this is much bigger and also you can close this see so basically it's I don't know it's uh, it's pretty much the same price as uh, no my Challenger was 51,000 no with the options it was 57 but I got it for 50 this was 52 I got it for 49 because it was 2000 off but now we have full size you know seats and that's what I was saying about the about the back door you see from now on I'm not gonna be walking around I'm just gonna take my backpack put it in here close the door and go here oh see it has a capless capless um, fuel tank which I think is great you know you don't have to touch anything and then you just close it beautiful I like everything about this car I like the wheels very fancy wheels I like the Tona edition so now I'm the car is taller it will be much easier to drive over all these humps you know oh and let me show you the 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 engine so the engine is smaller once again 5.7 I'm pretty sure that's all you need for the street so protected you see that that's part of this uh, Daytona package that's a Mopar uh, intake very similar to what I had but mine was uh, uh, air raid yeah mine was air raid this is Mopar like a genuine uh, filter so there you have it so that's your battery I'm guessing yeah that's the batteries over here like things are moved they moved around things on this car as compared to that one I'm pretty sure that's what your computer is you know what is that brake fluid wow brake fluid access is there this is the windshield washer that's your alternator and stuff like that that's your oil I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna touch anything here five point seven what oil do they put in five w twenty five w twenty over there I think it was zero something zero w either twenty or thirty and that's your coolant oh wow look it's a violet or purple color charger so it's charger here 5.7 v8 hemi over there hemi over here hemi so if somebody asks me a stupid question does that thing have a hemi i'm just gonna point to the hood okay what's the tire pressure they recommend here 32 32 psi and unfortunately I should I don't know I could have taken my but this is all different right I could have taken my uh, weather tech because you see you only get they cheaped out here you don't get a weather tech so probably that's going to be my my upgrade because these are really not practical especially in winter so I'm going to get the weather tech again like last time I uh, I got them from Canadian tire oh and one thing you see that one has a sunroof this one doesn't have a sunroof but and I need to buy some sneakers you know you see it has this again my car did not have that but my car had the, the Challenger I mean this is now my car but Challenger had the little storage here with a little net on both sides and it had uh, this one was here yeah you get one and then you get another over there and you get some USB connectors and I'm gonna organize all this junk later 
Maybe this will can go in there. So yeah, that's the. Oh, let's look at the uh, window sticker. So you see, much better. 14.7 in the city. That Challenger was doing uh, 69 liters in the city. So this is way better on fuel. And so it's a uh, Dodge Charger RT 2021 black interior, granite crystal metallic outside color, Napa leather, uh, Alcantara faced front vented seats, 5.7 Hemi V8 with fuel saver MDS, 8 speed torque flight automatic transmission stability control four wheel brakes all speed traction control tire pressure monitoring system um, supplemental side curtain airbags somewhere there three mode electronic stability control active exhaust sport mode sport mode park view rear camera rain sensing windshield wipers automatic headlamps Oh wow, so you see auto here is at the top when the Challenger auto was on the side, so I like this better. Uh, power windows with front one touch up and down, 7 inch full color display. Uconnect 4C, 8.4, oh 7 inch is this. 7 inch full color customizable in cluster display. Oh yeah, I can customize it. So the speedometer it goes only up to 260 kilometers, over there it was 300. But this one is 8.4 inch Uconnect 4C. Hands-free communication with Bluetooth streaming, Google Auto, Apple CarPlay capable, one year Sirius XM radio subscription, 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot, Super Track Pack, which doesn't do anything. Basically on these cars, unlike Hellcat, you only have two modes, normal and sport. When you go into that uh, performance pages, Super Track it just opens that page where you can uh, you can set up your sport mode. Like what do you want to have? You want to have sport suspension, you want to have uh, sport steering, or you want to have normal steering. So you just set up your sport mode. But you only have basically two mo two modes: street and sport. On a Hellcat you have track, and they have a button here. Uh, instead of this, it says track, and so you get three modes. And also I, I believe in track mode uh, your active exhaust is disabled. So Dodge performance pages, bright pedals, and you see I don't have the clutch, uh, thanks God. So AC, dual zone, automatic temperature control, universal garage door opener, universal garage door opener, I have no idea what this is, we'll find out later. So a mirror. For your, for your girlfriend and that's the speaker I think when you yeah when you have your Bluetooth phone hooked up okay optional granite metallic was extra 345 bucks Daytona edition was three thousand twenty five dollars all all this is Canadian so Daytona includes this Napa leather front ventilated seats uh, black edged premium floor mats black edged premium premium floor mats are you talking about this okay uh, rear illuminated cup holders auto demon exterior driver mirror power heated manual folding mirrors with memory premium stitched dash panel yeah this premium stitched see this that's what you get with Daytona edition Gloss black instrument panel cluster, Mopar cold air intake, power driver and front passenger seats, and on the Challenger only driver was power. The passenger was all manual. Uh, second row heated seats, wow. Like, so he, this is heated, right? Yeah, front heated seats, second row heated seats. Of course, in the Challenger, only two, you only have two seats, so only that was uh, uh, heated power four-way driver lumbar adjust uh, exterior mirrors auto adjust and reverse well actually I don't like this feature you know when you back this car as soon as you put it into reverse the mirrors go down so that you can see the bottom of your uh, of your fenders which is not very helpful so I have to get used to that Satin black charger deck lid badge Daytona instrument panel badge so 
I'm pretty sure it'll say Daytona when you start it. Okay, what does it say? Okay, see charger, 59 kilometers. Ignition on, accessory on. So what, so I got empty gas? They didn't even give me any gas? Media. So we'll see. Usually you get a full tank of gas. And this is also different. In the, in the Challenger, all this is below here. Uh, so this is a, easier to access. So the same, but here, like, it's the same in this block. It's just that this whole block in the challenge is down there. You know? I like this. This is very cool. Oh, and let's see. What do I do about my, my phone? Can I? Because in that car... Yeah, you see, this is too big for the cup holder. But at least you, you get this. But actually, I transferred this thing from a Challenger. So I get this. So I like this feature. All right, what else do we have here? Uh, Daytona instrument panel badge, set in black charger deck lid badge, Daytona front grill badge, uh, set in black one piece performance spoiler, heated steering wheel, power tilt telescoping steering column, 20 by 9 low gloss granite crest. Uh, crystal wheels carbonite interior accents carbonite oh this one wow this is cool see this carbonite interior accents yeah so that you get this and you get the stitching and then of, of course it says here daytona i'm telling you i like this it's kind of like you drive like a special car you know Destination charge 1995. So yeah, that was the sticker price, 51,230 Canadian. But again, they had it two thousand dollars off. And so now I'm back to full five-year warranty, zero deductible, hundred thousand kilometers, fully transferable. And I always like to keep this. To keep this. Uh... Oh look, they didn't even connect it to the. It still has the sticky. Sticky. I think I'm gonna take a picture of this because if I fold it, it's gonna it's gonna stick because over here it has the sticky side is there. Oh wait, maybe I can just do this. Yeah, it will be sticking to everything. This is sticky. This is not sticky. Oh, cool. So then I'm going to fold it like this. It's always cool, you know, when it's time to sell the car and that you have this original window sticker so people can see right away. Uh, what do you... What do you have? Okay. And I'm going to... There should be like a fold in there somewhere because you see on that car I had a little pouch that you put all this stuff. You see my new... My new ownership, and that's my uh, my temper insurance. So we all good. So I think now I'll just son of a. And that's what happens with this sticky stuff. <laughs> Man, this thing is dangerous. I'm gonna get rid of it at the first opportunity. Oh, and also one cool thing about this car is that it has bigger pockets in windows in i mean in doors so like these on the charger you only has uh, you only had uh, one pocket here and one little thing in there you didn't have this 
so this is much bigger all right let me find a destination adjust the seats and then if my battery is still good we'll i'll show you some uh, driving with this you see this is all electric pretty cool when well, here you have a support and now i can oh wow even the back is uh, electric Yeah, I like this when I can straight my hands, my arms in a straight line and because you know, when you turn the wheel, right? But I'm too, why is it so tall? Well, that's the Lambo support. Oh, that's low, it goes down. Yeah, I like that. Basically, when I set up, my car for the first time i want i want the top of the steering wheel be at the level of my of my uh, chin i find that's the, the best it's the best way see like this maybe a bit maybe a bit taller like this but this is great so it's all electric very easy to to adjust and it, i'm pretty sure it has uh you see alpine sound system pretty much probably what i had in the in the challenger so wow. man i cannot believe that this is this is my new baby and but these seats you know they're so comfortable they're so comfortable oh and i got my i always do this for some reason you see i try to put down the the rear window so here do we have a mirror Hello. In the mirror we have the handle. So I think I'm pretty familiar now with the car. So I get two keys as well. So I get two keys. Just have to hide all this junk in here i just moved you know whatever was there on the right seat i put in here whatever was there in the in the door i put in here and by the way these are the gloves i bought two pairs of these very cool gloves it was like 14 bucks these ones and black ones the black ones are now in they're now in the in my semi truck new car new sneakers those cowboy boots were falling apart also got some new shorts shorts don't match don't match the color of the car but i think the sneakers do and this car had those um, edge protectors i told them please remove them and the guy says yeah we can do that First thing I gotta do is I gotta buy new new carpets. Well, this is still Oakville. I just stopped by here. This Walmart was very close to the dealer. So now I gotta get used to this. You know, I'm always pushing these buttons because on the Challenger, of course, you only have two windows, so. And it's easy when you put your hand like this that's where your fingers end up and those are rear rear, <laughs> rear windows so now i have to make a conscious effort try to remember that these are the front and also another thing to to um and look at this this is also premium stitching just like here and another thing to remember is there's this on the challenger this handle was here you know a couple of times i'm like when i need to open the door i was looking wait a second where's the handle because you know you're used to it and you just put your 
without looking you know you put your hand like this Now one thing I, I'm a bit confused here is about this push on off brake. Brake plus. Press brake and, and push button to start. Oh okay. Yeah, see it says parking. So Alright, and it comes with again when you get a new uh, Chrysler or Dodge vehicle, you get um you get free you get free uh, satellite so that's one thing I have to do is uh, maybe I can do it on the weekend but maybe Monday I'm gonna call the XM satellite and uh, cancel cancel the subscription on that car do I have the VIN still yeah I do because they will ask me which car because here I have it for one year for free and I'm paying for the one on the truck so anyway so what we shall put in so we are in Oakville Ontario uh, what's the time 208 that's not right speedometer vehicle info for some reason the vehicle info is in what is it bars coolant temperature engine power engine torque engine torque is in newton meters what is this engine power is in kilowatts so everything is in european for some reason right 3.1 like we use psi here yeah oh it says bar 3.1 bar well i have to look at the manual uh, okay what do i need to do i need to change the Screen setup, speedometer. Oh, it's probably over here. Settings. To run a key to. Okay. Settings. Turn vehicle, it's already on. Yeah, language display units. Oh, probably that's where you. Units, metric. Yeah. Voice, camera mirrors and wipers tilt side mirrors and reverse oh you see that's where okay cool so it's ticked off because it's a really annoying feature when as soon as you put this in uh, reverse the mirrors go down it's it's crazy i don't like it now what about camera active park view backup camera guidelines okay so i want to see the guide lights yeah mirrors or oh, lights this is interesting headlight off delay headlight illumination approach headlights with wipers you see as soon as you start wipers headlights will turn on which in some state states is uh, obligatory auto unlock and exit sound horn with lock passive entry yeah because it has those uh, you can put your finger on the handle and it opens or oh, audio that's what I wanted to do equalizer I'll do bass like this medium a little bit like this and this is like this perfecto system information we don't need that seats and comfort easy exit seats auto on heated vented seats auto on heated vented seats and steering wheel i don't i don't want that Tag. okay doors and locks mirrors wipers clock there you go that's what i wanted to do set time hours see time now is 12 11 12 11 p.m mm. that's it you see now it's 12 11 perfect voice voice response length i don't want that like what about display display mode auto manual set scheme dodge one oh wow it has all this stuff dodge one okay let's see let's try dodge one see it's a custom back uh, oh wow i love this 
language English I see climate so yeah it's the same thing like climate I can do auto I can do you see I can change the no not this one this one oh this one yeah I can change the intensity or I can go in just auto and I don't want maximum yeah I can just adjust let's say 20.5 20.5 Celsius that's it and that's medium yeah and apps we can do the same performance pages I like that you know thing but it's, it's usually very slow to load okay and, uh, power g-force gauges g-force yeah this one i like this one but you see it's all in bar and it's all in kilowatts it's just why do i need this so i have to change this see units oh that's why let's do us units there you go now it should be horsepower yep pounds per foot and horsepower perfect and let's double check here uh, yeah see PSI now 46 it shows PSI and what was the other one that uh, miles per gallon now it shows miles per gallon yeah excellent yeah I want American I'm used to PSI wait a second press ok yeah now we're in kilometers all right so now we still have pound per foot and horsepower okay perfect all right so there was a quick learning experience yeah and i asked the i asked the oh wait a second so now all my it says 37 miles <laughs> See, as soon as you change to american american units uh the odometer is in miles but that's fine i don't care about the odometer anyway what shall we do so it's 12 o'clock so it's time to eat something today is saturday let's see my favorite uh pita hut is open pita hut hesper road cambridge open let's go head northwest toward oakwalk drive just because this is a special day i'm gonna take 407 much faster that way so a new car but the most importantly new sneakers and new shorts man i feel like the christmas came early this this year and this would not be possible in russia you know one of the one of the reasons i remember that i wanted to immigrate or defect to canada was because of the ability to borrow money oh yeah I started saying that the sales guy said um, don't don't drive super fast before thousand kilometers Where's, what happened again to the oh there you go and by the way, that, that's by the way that's another oh I want you change the shifter 
over you don't have even to look here because over there as soon as you come out of park actually well it, it always shows as soon as you start the engine reverse neutral and if you go into reverse it shows you you see check entire surroundings and this is drive and if you push it this way it becomes wait a second now it's all American I don't like that <laughs> I don't like the temperature to be in Fahrenheit um, and the brake you see for some reason it doesn't want to come on it's probably on probably the the parking brake probably the the engine has to be off or something let's go oh wow it can still go like this oh, man yeah I like this I'm pretty I'm pretty tall right so wait I don't like this it's blowing right into my naked knee go like this go like this go like this yeah this is good this is like this away from me See now I don't have to hold my hand on the um, on the shifter anymore. I'm telling you, man. After <laughs> turn right onto Oakwa Drive, then turn left. After manual transmission, this is so much more fun. So much easier to drive. Turn left. Because of course this thing has active exhaust, so the pipes are. So the pipes are always open when you are idling, but then once you start driving. Turns out, yeah, I got lots of uh, lots of gas. Use the left two lanes to turn left onto Trafalgar Road, Halton Regional Road Three. Signs for Ontario 407. It's just under under full. So now the only problem I have is that now because I'm continue on Halton Regional Road Three for 13 kilometers. Because I'm driving a Charger now, I gotta change my T-shirt. Because my t-shirt on the front says Dodge Challenger. And it says the same in the back. But yeah, I like the sound, you know, that this it, it it still sounds pretty like throaty, you know, like like a rumble. For some reason with the automatic I don't feel the urge you know to burn the pavement or just relax and to drive like this you don't have to push the car all the time so now I'm driving like a bus you know like an old guy like a granny door <laughs> who buys cars with two doors man I like the the numbers are so cool you 
you know the, the style the typeface of the numbers is totally different from my challenger it's so easy to read you know see the 77 kilometers 79 80 so you have digital speedometer then of course you have analog over there and I can see how this car will be fuel efficient because since it's automatic right it's always shifting into the easiest gear and I see my RPM is like 1500 you know even though it's a smaller engine so usually the smaller the engine the higher your RPM is right but I was driving in the Challenger with 6.4 engine I was you know very rarely I was at or below 2000 like only if I'm cruising on a, on a interstate I was at like I said 1800 1850 because then I'm like 75 80 miles an hour so most of the time I was above 2000 like 2500 3000 but this one it's trying to stay below 2000 all the time and that's how I am plus the car is the engine is smaller right that's how I know that this will be a much more of a daily driver than the 6.4 all right we need uh, I wanted to go on the 407 what the heck I guess because I, I turned on avoid tolls because that's the road it goes east and it starts going north to 401 but the amount of time is the same like when I was going to the dealer it said 42 minutes on this road which is toll free and 42 minutes if you go on 407 which would probably cost at least 25 30 bucks Sorry, I'm not gonna even touch the sport mode I'll just let, let the engine break in oh yeah this is so much nicer forget manuals you know oh by the way one cool thing happened is that Eaton transmission reached out to heavy hole TV believe it or not and they inviting me to the Michigan site to test some trucks I'm serious sometime in July or August they said they're gonna pay me to uh, to do a review of some new automatics so I can go there spend like a couple of days at that uh, field center I saw it many times you know when you go on I-69 in Michigan and then you see on the right there's like a sign if you go west towards uh, or rather east towards Canada it, it's about like hour hour and a half away from the border I'm thinking maybe I'm mistaken but on the right there's a sign it says Eaton testing center like a huge property that's where they test all these new transmissions and so I'm guessing now they're trying to get more exposure on in social media and so I was one of the lucky guys to uh, receive the invitation uh, a few weeks ago and I said yeah sure are you kidding me of course I'm gonna I'm gonna go because this is uh, because you know quite often honestly I'm I'm offered I'm offered some deals what I'm trying to move my mirror here a little bit all right I think now it's good the right one is good I adjusted them when I the car smells very nice of course like all new cars and smell and so yeah they reached out 
a few weeks ago and I'm often getting emails you know about this where people want me to review some lights or some dash cams you know and most of the time they don't want to pay they don't want to pay they're just gonna give you that dash cam you know or you can keep the dash cam after review you know but I'm not interested in that I have plenty of cameras as you can see and so these guys this is pretty much down my alley right we're talking Eaton we're talking automatic transmissions I'm pretty sure this will be of interest you know to the subscribers on my channel and I said yeah I'll be I'll be honored to be a part of the social media review team so that's what I'm going to be doing and um, the, the border between US and Canada might reopen at the end of July because they, they, they wanted to open it in June but now they postponed that by one month I think till 24th July 24th so today is Saturday I'm just gonna take it easy enjoy my car my new charger Daytona edition nice and then tomorrow I'll have to put on some work clothes and go do something about that air coupler yeah I just pro probably gonna take the the male coupler from the stinger and it's uh, because it's a smaller size and install it on on the hose on the flip axle and if my friend Alan is watching from Keswick uh, maybe I can meet you somewhere there in between you know if you can help me out and stop by JC and get some of these smaller couplers and I can drive my new fancy Dodge charger and uh, well I can actually maybe drive all the way there because you know it's a new car I it's always fun to drive a new car but Keswick is about 160 kilometers basically 100 miles away but I want those GC connectors yeah I'm gonna be driving slow you know measured and I think they were saying for many other cars I remember that it, they don't want you to use the cruise control because in order for the car to to break in properly you need to drive at uh, various speeds and so it's best to avoid the uh, cruise control originally and then after 1,000 kilometers I'll be uh, using the cruise control and I'll be using the sport mode and by the way one more thing I wanted to mention another reason why I decided to get rid of the Challenger is this because I'm driving on the freeway and I can see exactly how much horsepower I'm, I'm, I'm uh, using and if you are even at high speed like you know 70 80 miles an hour you need very little horsepower so you don't need you're not you're not ever using and I, I, I have my hand on the on the shifter and I'm already thinking okay what gear shall I go in and then I remember wait a second I don't have to worry about that anymore because I got automatic transmission 
yeah it'll take me a couple of days to to readjust that I don't have to think about choosing a gear anymore and my left foot is on the floor see that's another thing that you don't have to move your left left foot anymore right it's so much easier this is this guy is for typical American invalid or Canadian beautiful yeah everything is in in Fahrenheit I'm looking at the temperature 73 F outside 69 inside so yeah you hardly use any horsepower you know so when would you meters and slight right onto the Ontario 401 west ramp to London like when would you use 500 horsepower on the Challenger it's only if you're driving at slight right onto the Ontario 401 west ramp at six or seven hundred I mean six or seven thousand rpm right like a total maximum meters, merge onto Ontario 401 west. and even then I'm not so sure if you're on a straight line but and of course you use it when you are accelerating right when you try to merge with traffic on the freeway and then once you're on the freeway you're driving like most people you know 70 75 miles an hour and then you don't need 500 horsepower what do you see when you need to push it it can go Man. because yeah there was a truck behind me and so I just pushed gas and the car shot like a rocket So much for us uh, slow driving <laughs> but what am I supposed to do right if I slow down there's other vehicles behind that guy come on yeah I flash my headlights I wish we would have this like I'm on the truck you know I often use this but in my truck, if I need, if I want to flash somebody, like okay, to change lanes, if somebody's you know slow to to uh, change lanes, on the truck I have to reach out like this and flip the main switch uh, because these this bar does not work unless your main switch is on, like your headlights is on. You see, like in a typical car, right? You can always just move this handle and it flashes the lights and I'm so used to it you know like okay why are we so slow man I'm in the left lane doing 104 that's not good hundred fifteen and now we are at 1450 rpm Now, another interesting phenomenon should happen now is that people will be afraid to pass me. You know why? Because this is the most popular police car in US and Canada. <laughs> so people will think I'm a cop. So I should probably go to Canadian Tire and get some uh, fake antennas and put some fake antennas on the roof then they will definitely think that I'm a cop but I'll give you a, I'll give you a, a, a tip no police cars I've ever seen in my life have aluminum have had aluminum wheels okay but police departments are too cheap they always use black steel wheels and I remember, you know, I always look at that and wonder why, you know? 
but kind of like city buses like I don't know in the States but over here all city buses they always have white steel rims and you would think that in 21st century people should already be using aluminum because you know here in Canada everything rusts right and so once I even asked one guy I asked the Canadian cop I said why all of you guys always have steel rims and he looked at me with kind of like perplexed expression on his face and he says that's what they gave us <laughs> which didn't answer my question like so why are you always ordering cars with steel rims well first off it's it's easy to uh, it's easy to see that you are a cop because like who's using steel wheels now right the only people that use steel rims are in winter right when they switch to you know like a lot of people they use summer tires and then in winter they go back to the place where that uh, they keep their tires like a typically a tire shop or a dealer and then they give them the they take off the summer tires together with wheels and then they get winter tires and usually they just they're already sitting on uh, rims typically steel rims because they're cheaper oh somebody blew out the tire and so the only time you will see uh, you will see a steel tires in winter when people are switching to winter tires pretty fast you see like I don't feel a lot of difference but yeah I don't want to drive this fast but this guy behind me was pushing me in this blue car yeah how fast do you want to go 150 I better, I better hide away in this middle lane. But this, if this was Challenger, I would just be, I would be in this lane. stay in one lane that's dangerous driving so how do you guys like my new car you, you feel you feel the, the difference probably right the challenger was much louder and this is so quiet but of course, yeah, especially because this is an automatic, when you push the gas, the response is not as fast as with the Challenger, and of course you don't get such a you know, huge acceleration, but I'm pretty sure that if I switch into the sport mode, it'll be very similar, you know, in how the car accelerates. Right now, of course, I push gas, and the car hesitates because it, it, it tries to stay in the, in the higher gear,
it says I'm using 40 horsepower <laughs> doing 120 17 horsepower oh it's, it was because I was on uh, going up a hill so now let's say 115 which is uh, 70 miles an hour 60 60 it, it always changes but 60 horsepower you see that's what I need what that's what I mean you don't need 500 horsepower to do 75 miles per hour on a, on a flat freeway see I'm driving next to regular cars Hyundai Honda Toyota they don't even have an engine like this right my engine is pretty big compared to a regular car now like all these guys I'm pretty sure they just have a four-cylinder engine so mine is 5.7 so it's not your typical four-wheeler either even though it's not a challenger but it's it's good enough for me and the car holds the road pretty well because it's still heavy right it's a heavy car yeah I remember that's one thing I didn't like about Mazda when I had that 2.5 liter Mazda Sport like three but with a 2.5 you know that's a good size engine for a small car but the car was able to drive fast but it was very shifty kind of like on the road in windy conditions you know I did not like it like Challenger and this one and Charger uh, I think they're safer because they just hold the road so well you know they're not afraid of the wind ah man the joys of new automotive experience so let's see what's my uh, 16 miles a gallon wow you know what I had on a uh, Challenger 10 Well, once I started driving in the freeway, I started going up. I think by the time I reached the deal, it was it was 11 or 12, but definitely way worse than this. And I like this. This is my favorite feature is a three-click signal, right? You just touch it. You don't have to push it and hold it, right? You just touch it, and it gives you three clicks for the turn signal I love this I wish they would have it on semi trucks but again semi trucks are like ages away in technology from from cars in North America I'm pretty sure in Europe they have all that you see like all these well actually you can get this remember I talk about this on the Kenworth even on my Kenworth you can get all this on the steering wheel the cruise control the the um, See, I, I got the phone buttons here so I can answer the phone without taking my hands off the wheel. And of course, I'm going to pair this. By the way, I remember to unpair my phone from the Challenger. So I'm going to pair this with, the, with this car. As you know, it's a slight heel. It was 65 horsepower. Now it's 40. 10. See, the guy on my left is afraid to pass me. <laughs> He's probably evaluating the amount of antennas on my roof to see if it's a cop or not. I'm telling you, that's what that's what they all drive in US and Canada. Like most cops, they have a they have a Dodge Charger.
take back what I said about the cruise control. I'm just gonna set it to this speed over here. People are crazy. Everybody sits on my bumper for some reason. Look at this guy. It's just not safe in here. Forty-nine horsepower, fifty, forty-six, and I have three hundred seventy horsepower. to have a dark gray car because all these black stickers they look very cool black on gray I love it I once saw a car a dark gray car and, and the guy had a you know like a line like a band alongside the this on which side like this wide like a stripe and it was black and I remember I was surprised to see how well it looked black stripe on a dark gray car and that's what I have now I have uh, black black uh, stickers everywhere right the guy behind me sits like two meters on my bumper Oh, I was thinking about getting this one. That's a Nissan uh, Rogue, an SUV. They're not very expensive. You know, decent size, decent size uh, vehicles. get on your nerves you know
pushed gas I was in regular mode with no spot mode and it picked up speed pretty fast you know I don't know, 5.7, I think it's a great motor. For comparison, Ford Mustang 5.0 has 460 horsepower versus 370 over here. But, but it has 420, 420 torque. Whereas this one is 395, so there's a big difference in horsepower, but to get 460 in a Ford Mustang, you have to be at 7,000 RPMs. So it's not a good comparison, but a better comparison is the torque, you know, because that's what you use. Because that's what you use in daily driving, right, at, at the low RPMs. And so Ford Mustang 5.0 has 420 torque. This one has 395. So it's pretty similar. So I would say it's the same class of a the same class of a vehicle as a Mustang, maybe better because it has four doors, so it's more comfortable and it has a much bigger trunk. Because I remember when I had that V6 Mustang, the space in the back was tiny. You see, now we're burning two horsepower. it'll be the worst will be in winter in the city when I had a ram like that one so I was getting very bad mileage when we were flipping the axle it was just drizzling a little bit and then when we finished 10 or 15 minutes after that it's really started coming down but by that time the wrecker was gone I was inside my car Yeah, and also another thing I noticed that yeah, the automatic transmission forces you to drive more reasonably. You know, when you have that 500 horsepower with a manual 3 max 6 speed, it just sometimes turns you into a little bit of a you know, a race hobbyist. It's just the nature of the beast. Yeah, 
I changed to metric oh. right away. <laughs> the temperature outside is plus 23 Celsius. Over here it's 20.5, that's what I programmed. 20.5. GoPro will die soon. Well, it still has lots of battery power, I can see in the mirror, but the card, I think I have 128 gigabytes in there, but it's a micro card, but for some reason it doesn't last very long. What is this from? This was in here. Yeah, that's how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go today to Canadian Tire. And you tell them the make and model of your car, and they order, they order you this uh, weather tech. drag and here we have a bunch of dealers right one after another well actually there's only two Honda and Ford but over there we have Volkswagen I've never been to this place for some reason I was never interested I think once actually I went in to look at the yeah that expensive Honda you know when I was choosing what to go with like I wanted a performance car and Honda has a like a sport model I think I came in here did some test driving but that was like years ago normal I'm not interested in regular regular like Honda Civic or something like that oh and they still have construction in here it's a very bad area because there's only one lane open And 
has three lanes and so people from three lanes have to merge into one that's not good to wrap up this blockbuster because I deactivated those uh, tilting mirrors I really don't like this feature and that's it so how are we doing with 14.3 uh, oh yeah because I picked up I was the range says 300 kilometers <laughs> on the on the challenge of full tank I was doing like 250 200 it was ridiculous all right that's it thanks for watching boys and girls be good enjoy the rest of your weekend <laughs>